Hey, brother! Ben, how long do you think I would have to train in order to do a backflip like Ray does at the beginning of this trailer? Because it might be my new favorite scene ever. Oh my goodness gracious, you guys! The episode 9 trailer is finally here, and we finally have a title, The Rise of Skywalker. Truly an interesting title, because as far as I know, the last person with the actual last name of Skywalker died at the end of The Last Jedi. But then in the trailer, we hear said Skywalker say, We've passed on all we know. A thousand generations live in you now. So that leaves us with the question, which Skywalker is rising? <laughs> Guys, I'm not sure which side of the force is better, light side or dark side, but when it comes to coffee, I absolutely know which side, and that is as black as possible. And if you want to get some of your own black coffee, you can head over to carlinbrotherscoffee.com. Okay, so my main takeaway from this trailer is the overwhelmingly familiar story beats from Return of the Jedi. Which, of course, you might expect. J.J. Abrams directed The Force Awakens, which was essentially a giant love letter to A New Hope, and now he's directing The Rise of Skywalker, so you might expect it to be a giant love letter to Return of the Jedi. And it's already showing. For example, in A New Hope, Luke starts out on the desert planet of Tatooine, but doesn't return again until Return of the Jedi. Similarly, Rey started on the desert planet of Jakku, and now once again, we see her standing in the sand. That said, it's not confirmed that this is Jakku, but it's definitely my guess. Why does everyone want to go back to Jakku? Especially since in her Force vision, we saw her looking up at a ship that looks strikingly similar to this ship ship in the trailer heading towards a, I don't know, what would you call it, a city in the clouds? But hmm, who would live in a city in the clouds? I don't know, maybe this guy? Hey, Lando's back! And once again, just like in Return of the Jedi, flying the Millennium Falcon. I'll take good care of her. She won't get a scratch. Also, obviously this is not Cloud City. I actually think it looks a lot more like that base Galen Erso was on in Rogue One where he was working on the Death Star technology. Speaking of the Death Star though, maybe the biggest thing linking the two movies so far is this awesome shot of Death Star wreckage. Now it's unconfirmed whether this was Death Star 1 or Death Star 2 because if you ask me, they both really looked like they blew up. <laughs> But I have a feeling it was Death Star 2 because, again, that's the one that was in Return of the Jedi, and because of the amazing evil laughter we hear just after this of Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> and yes, that is 100% confirmed to be Palpatine. At first I wasn't sure, like, is that him? Is it Snoke? But Ian McDermott, who plays Palpatine, was literally at the screening of the trailer and came out afterwards, so yeah, it's Palpatine. Which, side note, means that the planet they're on right here is probably the moon of Endor from Return of the Jedi as well. It's just a part of the planet we haven't seen before. If you look at it from space, there's tons of water. It's not just one big forest. Which is shocking to me because most of the time in Star Wars, it seems like each planet is just one landscape all the way through. But, so that brings us back to our original question, which Skywalker is rising? Whatever that means. Does it mean someone is realizing their full potential? Is somebody coming back from the dead? Is someone ascending to a higher Jedi power that we've never seen before? Or is it even referring to just one person? Well, no matter what, fortunately for us, it's a pretty short list of people with the last name Skywalker that it even could refer to. So let's just start at the top of the list. Probably the least likely, but we're gonna cover it anyway, Shmi Skywalker. Shmi, in case you don't remember, is the mother of Anakin Skywalker, who was later killed by some Tusken Raiders, but is most most famous for her immaculate conception of Anakin. Or at least that's what she tells Qui-Gon Jinn. There was no father. I can't explain what happened. But very recently, there has actually been some development on this front. If you keep up with the Darth Vader comic, and it is literally the only comic I actually keep up with, you may already be aware of some pretty interesting news. And real quick, spoiler alert for Darth Vader issue number 25, said issue confirms the longtime theory that Emperor Palpatine manipulated the Force to create Anakin inside of Shmi. And now Palpatine is back. Convenient, eh? Really makes you wonder if we might meet another character whose parents, like Shmi, were nobody, just filthy junk traders, but then suddenly they conceive a super powerful force user out of nowhere. I don't, ooh, boy, that would be a plot twist. I'm obviously talking about Finn. <laughs> Either way, I don't think we're going to be seeing Shmi, so let's move on to our next candidate, her son, Anakin Skywalker, aka Darth Vader. I'm a person, and my name is Anakin. And boy, let me tell you, if it is one thing Star Wars is 100% certain it thinks it knows we want, it is more Darth Vader and stuff. And they're not wrong. 
I freaking love Darth Vader. I'm literally drinking out of two Darth Vader mugs at the same time right now. Did I show you guys my comics? These aren't even different issues. This is all just number one with different covers. I was Darth Vader for Halloween last year. And have you guys met my son? Luke? Which, let me be clear, I know that was a hilarious joke and you probably can't even breathe for laughing so hard, but my son was not named after Luke Skywalker. But if you want to see more of him, you can click this card, he's in the vlog. My point is, Star Wars will do whatever they can to include Darth Vader and stuff. Best part of Rogue One? Vader. Star Wars Rebels not doing so well? Bring in Vader. First trailer for your brand new trilogy? Whose mask do we see? <laughs> it's Darth Vader. A mask which is apparently showing Kylo the power of the dark side, even though we saw Darth Vader return to the light. So, uh, yeah, no, we're gonna come back to that. And now this movie is called The Rise of Skywalker, as in maybe rising back from the dead? He was the last person to defeat the Emperor, and returning from the dead is often a trick associated with immaculate conceptions. Although, as we said, maybe not as immaculate as we thought. But Either way, Kylo has been looking up to Vader for a long time, and it is arguably why he wears the helmet, which we see him repairing in the trailer. So I'd say there's at least a fair chance we see Darth Vader. But not as great a chance as the next two characters on our list, Luke and Leia. I mean, for one, Leia's just straight up in the movie. We've already seen her in the trailer. And it's super likely she's not gonna make it to the end of this movie. I mean, the last two movies have seen the death of Han and Luke, so it just seems like she would be next. But, so then maybe the title is referring to her dying and rising in like a heavenward kind of way. On the flip side though, we have Luke, whose voice is narrating throughout the trailer. He spent most of The Last Jedi complaining about the Jedi Order, saying they were selfish with the Force and basically just totally renounced them until just just before he dies at the end when he says he won't be the last Jedi. We've seen force ghosts in the past in the form of Obi-Wan and Yoda and even Anakin like we said earlier. So maybe rising means Luke has found a way to rise to an even higher power of post-life existence that isn't so light side focused. But then again, this story is not about Luke anymore. It's about Rey and Kylo. So for the title not to be about them specifically would seem kind of silly if you ask me. And of the two of them, at least one of them is 100% a direct descendant of a Skywalker. Kylo is Darth Vader's grandson. And even though Skywalker is not specifically his last name, it's his uncle Luke and his grandfather Anakin who he's been looking up to his whole life. If the title is about Kylo, it most likely speaks to a story of redemption, where he rises to the occasion and chooses to do the right thing, much like Luke convinces Darth Vader to do in Return of the Jedi yet another story beat. But where does that leave Rey? I mean, her last name still has yet to be revealed and she is the main protagonist of the series and Palpatine is back now. We've just learned that he did create life before. So if he did it again with Rey, then suddenly her and Anakin would actually be weirdly connected. In fact, she's already carrying his lightsaber around and if they were both conceived of the force, does that sort of make them family? Ugh, how can this title fit so many characters all at once? Well, a great question. I'm so glad you asked. And here's our theory, that the title isn't referring to a single person, but instead, Skywalker is the new name of the Force using people, not the light side Jedi or the dark side Sith, but the balanced light and dark Skywalkers. It's what the whole trilogy has thematically been leading up to. We see Kylo is pulled to the light in The Force Awakens. I feel it again. The pull to the light. And Rey is quickly pulled to the dark in The Last Jedi. You went straight to the dark. You didn't even try to stop yourself. On top of that, we see the two of them bonding throughout the movie, both able to empathize with the other's struggles. Only for both of them to completely double down on their original allegiance after the throne room fight. And good for them, right? Light versus dark, good versus bad, exactly what we all wanted. Except now we learn there's an even bigger bad lurking in the dark. <laughs> Emperor Palpatine. And we know what he wants. It's the same thing he always wants. Control of the entire galaxy. Galaxy, which is also what Kylo wants, which to me seems to set up a very good the enemy of my enemy is my friend thing for Kylo and Rey. Uh, but wouldn't Kylo want to be at his side like Darth Vader was? Well, that's true and it's possible, but we've seen Kylo have a master before and we saw how that worked out. <laughs> 
Plus, if Palpatine actually did create Rey, then he might not want Kylo at all. In fact, let's talk about Rey, who we see in the trailer decked out in all white, a intentional contrast to her counterpart of Return of the Jedi, Luke, who has spent the entire movie in black. Luke, of course, though, eventually chooses the light, which makes you wonder what might happen to Rey. I mean, she seems so dedicated to the light side. What kind of information might change her mind? Ironically, I'm sure it is the exact information that would push Kylo in the opposite direction and pit them against each other once again. Can you just imagine Rey confronting Palpatine, confident in who she is, no longer concerned about her parentage or her past, only to find out she was actually created by the most evil person in the galaxy that she is in some ways like Darth Vader reincarnate? Because if you think about it, it's not like anyone really knows what happened on the Death Star, that Darth Vader changed his mind at the last second and saved the day. Rey didn't even know Luke was an actual real person. Luke Skywalker. I thought he was a myth. If she knows about Darth Vader at all, it is going to be as the menacing Sith Lord. Finding out she was made the same way would destroy her. But just because she doesn't know it, doesn't mean Vader didn't change, which brings us back to Kylo talking to the helmet. Why is it showing him anything if Anakin ended up seeing the light? And I would suggest to you that it's not Vader showing him anything, that it's actually Palpatine because it's always Palpatine. He's always the one pulling the strings. He was controlling both sides of the Clone Wars in episodes one, two, and three. He's the one having the Death Stars built and telling Vader what to do in four, five, six. And once again, he's going to have been pulling the strings for seven, eight, nine. And it's the same trick. He's pitting two sides against each other to distract from the real evil him. And in true Palpatine fashion, he wins either way. If Kylo defeats Rey, great, you are the new Darth Vader. If Rey defeats Kylo, great, you're the new Darth Vader. Unless they join forces, uniting the light and the dark, forming a brand new order that is accepting of both, and named after those who fully embodied the dark and the light side, the Skywalker. Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, what do you think? Will Rey have been born of the Force much like Anakin was? Let me know your thoughts in the towel section down below. Hey, if you're wondering what I'm drinking out of those two Darth Vader mugs, it's coffee in both of them. Carlin Brothers Coffee, of course. Available now at carlinbrotherscoffee.com. Guys, thanks so much for watching. As always, please remember to leave a like on this video if you haven't already, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Star Wars action from us. If you want to see us break down the leaked Episode 9 poster, you can check out this video right here or if you'd like to see more about how Rey and Darth Vader might be half siblings you can check out this video right here but Ben that's all I've got for you today man I will see you in another life brother